Welcome to our tutorial series on Corona game development. This is part of our step-by-step -step series in creating a basic game inside the Corona SDK. In this series we are creating a Star Explorer or traditional asteroid-esque style game. This is part 2C and today we will be looking at collisions and uh, restoring a game after life has, or restoring a ship after a life has been lost. There are two types of collisions that we need to handle inside of our game. We need to handle when a laser collides with an asteroid. We also need to look at what happens when an asteroid collides with a ship. Collisions can be complex inside of any kind of game. There are basically two types of collision detection that you can do inside of an application. Uh, you can do a local object listener where you're listening for a collision on a specific object. This is normally done when you have a one-to-many type situation such as we have one ship and we're looking for the possibility of an asteroid colliding with that ship. The second is a global object listener which handles collision detection for any collision between physics objects inside the game environment. This is handled where we have multiple types of collisions that can occur. Now at first glance you might think, oh well then we just need to add a object listener for a ship and listen for any ship collisions with asteroids. Yes, that could work, but since we're also looking for lasers colliding with the asteroids, this creates a more complex environment. So it actually works better as a programmer to go ahead and use a global object listener, which is the runtime add event listener, where we will be listening for collisions for any kind of collision inside of our game environment. Last time we left off, we have a ship that we can move around on the screen. We are capable of firing shots. So all we need to do is handle what happens when the ship collides with an asteroid and what happens when a laser hits an asteroid and the the removal of those objects from the screen. So picking up in the code where we left off, and do remember that all of this material is available on the Corona Labs website under their Getting Started Guide. You can see what's happening. You can download the graphics and the sample code. So let's get started with adding our collision detection. The basics of our collision detection is that we just need to know what objects collided. So let's create our function. And as with our drag phase that we discussed in our last section, section B, we need to know what phase of collision is happening, so, or the event. So we need to look at the event phase and see if this is just beginning. And if it has begun, then we need to know what two objects collided. So this sets up the basics of our phases. We have two possible phases in a collision. We have a began and ended. So this is not quite as complex as our drag situation, but we do need to know what objects are involved in that collision. So those are now set to object one and object two inside of our function. First thing we need to take advantage of is that we named each of our objects inside the environment, laser, ship, and asteroid. We can use those my names properties to help us more quickly determine what the collision event is between. Let's start by looking at a collision between an asteroid and a laser since that's how we generate points in the game. We have no way of knowing which one is object 1 and which one is object 2 when a collision occurs. Object 1 could be a laser or it could be an asteroid. In, because of that situation, we need to test for both situations where object 1 is the laser or object 1 is the asteroid. We're only interested when we're generating points or removing asteroids from the screen in collisions between an asteroid and a laser. We're not interested in asteroid to asteroid collisions or laser ship collisions. Thus, for our initial check, we need to see is it an asteroid or is it a laser. We can use the, the OR command to simply take care of that. If this returns true, then we need to handle the removal of both objects from the screen. And that can be done with the display.remove. So now both objects have been removed, laser and asteroid. Now we also need to remove these, this particular asteroid from the table so that we are no longer keeping track of it. We don't want the physics engine to 
continue applying physics pressure to it or be looking at possibly removing it once it removes the screen since it's already been removed. So that we can remove it from the table, we need, do need to cycle through the table and find the exact asteroid object in the asteroid table and remove that. So we'll cycle through using a for loop, the, the number of asteroids in the table down to one, doing a negative step. So however many asteroids they are down to the first asteroid. If there's a match, asteroid table sub i equals object one or object two, then we're going to remove it from the table and then we're going to break. Once it's found, there's no sense in continuing the for loop, so we can use the break command to stop that iteration through and removing other objects. That'll just streamline our program and make more effective use of our CPU time. Now we need to increase the score. The player destroyed an asteroid, so let's give them a few points for that. And we'll update that to the screen. then we need to end our if-then decision statement. So that handles asteroid and laser collisions. We can now shoot asteroids. We can't. Sorry, we can't do that yet because we haven't turned on the collision listener, but we'll get that next, or we'll get that after we add the laser, and, or we'll add ship We'll add our listener after we add the collision possibility between an asteroid and a ship. Now this can be handled as an else if type situation. An else if will speed up the computation of our program. We don't want to do a separate if else check for the collision. If the first condition has already been met, then this section will be ignored. So just like above, we were, where we were checking for laser and asteroid collisions, now we're checking with ship asteroid collisions, exact same situation. We don't know whether it's object one or object two, so we do need to check for both situations. And then we just simply need to handle what happens when the ship and asteroid collide. Now this is a more complex situation where a ship and an asteroid, there is the possibility that multiple asteroids could collide with the ship at the same time taking away multiple lives. That wouldn't be fair to the player. So we need to check and see if the player has already died or the ship has been destroyed. So we'll add a second if then statement if the ship and asteroid situation is true. So if they have already if they have not already previously been destroyed by an asteroid or were handling the destruction of an asteroid, then we need to handle the destruction of the ship by an asteroid. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and set died equal to true so that this won't propagate further and we'll update our lives information and our text. Now we do have the situation that we need to check for to make sure that we're not at zero lives left and the game would be over. So if we're not at zero lives there's still lives left, the gameplay will continue, but let's hide the ship and then call a restore ship function to handle cleanup. So we'll do this in one second, or 1000 milliseconds, after the ship has been des destroyed, just to slow things down a little bit and give the player a chance to recover. Okay, so now we just simply need to go in and set up the restore ship function. Now restore ship, since it this function is calling it, it already needs to be in existence before we get to the collision table or the collision function. So restore ship should be placed above the on collision function. So what, what needs to happen when we restore the ship? That, that's an excellent question. Basically we need to make sure that the ship is restored back to its original location, make sure that it doesn't have any velocity or push that's happening to the ship so that it doesn't continue to drift when we place it back onto the screen. We need to make sure that it's located back at the original starting position in the middle of the screen towards the bottom and 
then just simply fade it in and change dyed back to false. Okay, so our restore ship makes sure that the body is no longer active or moving inside the environment. It sets the velocity to zero, resets it back to its original location, and then we go to fade the ship in. So alpha is set back to one over four seconds, and we've got an on complete. When it is fully on the screen after the end of the four seconds, we turn the active body on so that the player is able to drag it and reset the died variable back to false so that further collisions can occur. Last thing that we need to do after our on collision is go ahead and turn on our runtime collision detection. So runtime, runtime add event listener, and we're listening for collisions. And if a collision occurs, go to on collision. Now, when we run our program, we still have an error. So at line 185, I apparently left something off. Go back up here. Should not have had that curly bracket. It should have been left as a comma. The curly bracket's there. I'll save this. Now we're able to move, shoot asteroids, and die. It fades back in after four seconds and died again. Yay! Our game is working, moving into functionality. Next thing that we need to handle is our scene management. This game should have a splash screen. It'd be nice to have high score, um, all, all the neat functionality. So in our next part, part three, we're going to add scene management to our game and simplify how the game works in totality. If you have any questions or would like to see something specific, please leave it in the comments below. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button.